Blog Talk Radio. What time is it? WH Radio. Wrestling Heads Radio, you got skits. I'm live here along with Oscar and Tom. What is going on, guys? What's going on, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? Everything's great over here. Uh, today here on Wrestling Heads Radio, uh, we have a special show today. Um, we have Mr. Biff Busick here with us. How you doing, sir? I'm good, guys. Thanks for having me on. I'm uh, I'm happy to be here. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Hey, man, thanks, man. We want to thank you for uh, taking your time out to uh, be on with us. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Um, a lot's been going on uh, with you uh, this past weekend. You just uh, did the Evolve shows. Um, Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Down in Florida. We had a good time down there. Yeah, great matches. Um, but before we get into that, um, uh, can you... Uh, Give our um, our listeners a a, um, a, a little feedback uh, on uh, on on yourself. Yeah, I mean, as far as uh, you know, just in general, I've been wrestling for about six years now. Um, originally, I was trained out of uh, out of Boston, Mass, at the Old Chaotic Wrestling School, which is now known as the New England Pro Wrestling Academy, which is run by Brian Fury. I uh, trained there for a couple of years before I moved to Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I went to Lance Storms Academy. It's actually like a three-month camp. Uh, I lived there for about three or four months, and after that, uh, after I was broke and had no money left, I, uh, I moved down to Texas where my brother actually lives. He's a state cop there. And uh, while I was in Texas, I got hooked up with Funaki School uh, down in San Antonio. And uh, I was down in Texas for just under a year, about uh, about 11 months. And then from there, I moved back to the Northeast. Uh, I got hooked up with Beyond Wrestling, and kind of everything popped from there. Uh, Beyond Wrestling exposed me to Evolve, to CZW, uh, and now PWG. So, I mean, it kind of was a uh, – I left a lot out there, but that's pretty much the skinny of it. It was just kind of traveling the roads, uh, learning from as many different, as, different people as possible, and then uh, – Finally, you know, I got hooked up with Beyond with their kind of online presence. I feel like it really helped me kind of get exposure to people who otherwise would have never saw me, seen what I was all about. So uh, I definitely have a, to give a lot of credit to Beyond for kind of giving me that exposure. And now, uh, I don't know, man, I'm just having fun. I mean, I'm still learning every day, and uh, I'm just enjoying pro wrestling. I love wrestling. It's uh, it's my passion. It's something that I just love to do. I love to watch it. I love to learn about it, read about it. Anything in my hands of wrestling, I love it. So, uh you know, these past couple of months, you know, trying to trying to get in with some of the best companies, you know, in the country and, and hopefully doing well with them, it's been a dream come true. So I'm just uh I'm just doing my thing and hopefully we can keep uh doing good things, you know. Yeah, uh definitely man. I'm definitely enjoying your work. Uh when I got uh when I first saw you I was like, Man, uh this guy is great, like and and now that well, I'm you. seeing that uh you're on your way to Pro Wrestling Gorilla is a show that me and my uh, friend Oscar here, we go to all the time. So it's going to be great to see you there. And when I saw PWG, I tweeted out that Biff Busick was on a card. I was like, oh, shit. You know, I was, I was pretty hot. <laughs> so. Absolutely. It's, it's funny, too, because uh, PWG is, uh, I don't know, I feel like it's been kind of its own niche in the type of style of wrestling they do. And I don't know with. uh a lot of people like to kind of throw me in there with guys like Drew Gulak and uh, Tim Thatcher and our styles, and uh, it isn't for everybody, but um, I think that, I don't know, I think that we're going to do well at PWG. I think that uh, we might not be, you know, as athletic as Ricochet or some of the other guys that are there, but we're going to kind of bring something different to the table, so it's it's definitely going to be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm going to pass the question on to one of my co-hosts. Uh, go ahead, Oscar. Yes, uh, first of all, it's, um this. It's great to see, it's great to have you on. Um, been been watching you for a while. Um, I'm glad to finally get to see you wrestle in person instead of watching you on YouTube or <laughs> IG review. So 
and PWK just can't wait. So um, I, I'm gonna be happy to get glad to see you on. Awesome, um, thank you. Awesome, yeah. Um, my first question I want to ask you, uh, you, you just right now, you, you've been giving out your background. Um, is there any wrestlers you like to you were looking up to while you were like um, while you were, while you were a fan? Oh yeah, man. Um, I mean, when I first first started getting into wrestling, I was a huge Hulk Hogan guy. Um, my brother Steve, oh, yeah. my older brother Steve, he loved wrestling. He got me into it. That's when Hogan and Macho Man and stuff were huge. I, remember, I just I just loved Hulk Hogan. I thought he was the best. Uh, then of course, Ultimate Warrior. I mean, I loved the Warrior. I, I loved that whole era oh, yeah. of wrestling back in in the mid to late eighties. And then, uh, you know, when Hogan uh, kind of was taken off, and uh, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels were getting big, I was huge fans of them. Um, then from there, I mean, I, I, when WCW started getting hot and Chris Jericho started getting popular, I was really a fan of Chris Jericho back in his WCW days when he was doing his kind of over-the-top heel uh, gimmick there. And then uh, from there, also with ECW, the guys like Taz, Rob Van Dam, and uh, Lance Storm, I was a huge fan. When I was 12 years old, I used to, uh, Lance Storm had a website that I used to read like all the time. He used to do just like commentaries about different subjects of him being on the road with WCW, ECW over in Europe and stuff like that. I just thought it was really cool. And I think from there, I really became a fan of Lance's wrestling. I mean, at first I became a fan of his website. Then from there, I started watching a lot of his matches, and I loved him. And, uh... You know, that was the type of wrestling that I really enjoyed, the technical type of uh, technicians. And then, uh, it's funny, I always told myself I wanted to get trained by a guy like him, and then uh, he ended up, you know, announcing he was going to be running a school. And uh, I was pumped because, I mean, growing up, he was one of my favorite, favorite guys. And then, uh, unfortunately, it was too expensive for me as a kid. So many years later, after I saved up, I finally uh, I got to go train with him, and it was awesome. I mean, I was a huge fan of Lance growing up. I mean... Him and Jericho were two of my favorite guys to watch, and then to actually get trained by him years later, it was uh, it was amazing. He's one of the best guys I've ever been in the ring with, smartest guys I've ever been in the ring with, and I mean his pedigree speaks for itself. He's been all over the world. He's been in the ring with some of the best guys in the business. So uh, I'm glad I was a fan of him when I was a kid because it definitely paid off at the end to get to uh, to get to train with him. Yeah, um, what you just mentioned right now, it, it's kind of similarly like how I I got into it. You know, I just got into the it started going to the days of the Hulk Hogan days, Warrior days. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, going to a show, I get to see the Ultimate Warrior rest of the Undertaker back in the days. Wow. And Carter, it must have been Undertaker. a good one. Yeah, I was like five years old, so uh, my parents took oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> it was my birthday present, pretty much. <laughs> it was awesome. a pretty good show. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, WCW, I did the same thing. I used to go off and off until it got hot when the NWO started going on. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, then ECW, the part, it was actually funny that uh, my uncle, he's actually listening to the show right now. He used to, okay, the area I used to live, I, we couldn't get ECW. So what my uncle used to did was he would record them. And he would, he would stay oh, up yeah. at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that's what time would come on until until I get to visit him, whatever. And then I, I'll watch him on his, in the VH, VHS tapes. And I used to watch that. Old school. Watch ECW. Yeah, like that, you know? <laughs> I love so, it. Um, yeah, that's how he did it. And then when he gets to Indies, I started getting to Indies pretty much my adult life. So then, then I had people asking, have you ever heard of CCW? People have been using weed whackers and stuff. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's oh, yeah. Same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. All right, I'm going to pass it on to Tom. Uh, go ahead, Tom. All right, well, first off, Biff, uh, thanks for coming on. I'm becoming, I'm pretty new to uh, you, actually, but I've been watching your stuff and CCW Evolve and beyond wrestling, and I'm becoming cool. a fan pretty quick of you, especially awesome, being a Northeast guy myself, so I can appreciate that. Uh, my you. question is, you talked about Landstorm training you. What were some of the key things that he taught you about wrestling in general? Well, I mean, first and foremost, Lance has been, like, all over the world. He's been, I mean, to overseas, to Japan and Europe. Uh, he's been in ECW, he's been in WCW, he's been in WWE, so it's just... He has that experience factor, and I think experience in any walk of life, whether you're a professional wrestler or you know, any other job, it's very, very important. So to learn from somebody with that much experience, I mean, there's very few places in the world where you can kind of learn from somebody that's been all over and can give you that type of information. Another huge thing with his uh, school, that it was a camp structure. It was structured, that it was five days a week for three months. So it's like a lot of schools you go to are only, you know, one day a week, two day a week. 
this school was five days a week, and you're in the ring with Lance. So, I mean, there's very, very few schools, again, that you can train that much with somebody of that experience. So, I mean, I would see kids. I mean, I had already trained for about two years before I went to Lance's school. And when I went to Lance's school, like, for three months, I saw kids there that had only trained for three months that were a hell of a whole lot better than kids who were training for, you know, two or three years at some of these other schools. So, I mean, those two things were probably the biggest. I mean, his experience and then the, you know, just the amount of time we actually have to spend with Lance and spend in the ring. So, I mean, I think going to Lance's school, at least for me, that I can that I can say, I mean, it helped me immensely just because I really dedicated, uh, you know, pretty much my whole life. I mean, a lot of kids that go to wrestling school, they have a job or they have school to go to. I mean, going to Lance's camp, it was my full-time job. So, I mean, in those three months, I probably got – you know, years of experience elsewhere that I could have probably never gotten because a lot of guys that are around these days haven't done a lot of the stuff that Lance has done. So, I mean, I'd, I'd say there's a lot of little stuff, too, in there, but I just his experience and the time that we got to get in the ring, that was, that was the biggest key to go in there to, to improve him for me anyway. Yeah, definitely. Everybody who has been to, you know, Lance Storm School has, you know, just sung praises about the guy and how much, you know, he's taught them because, you know, he, he might not have had as much success as uh, some other guys, but, you know, he's still one of the most respected guys in the industry, one of the best technical wizards that, you know, Absolutely. I think anybody saw. Absolutely. And, you know, the you know, the ECW crowd, I think, he got the best taste of it, um, you know, when he did his thing in WWE. We didn't get to kind of see that. But yeah. I think everybody knows Lance on his category, so it must have been... You know, it must have been hard, but it must have been a great learning experience. Exactly. Absolutely. All right. Um, that's, I guess I'll uh, go for the next question. Um, okay, my next question. Um, so right now um, you work with CCW, and um, I, I've seen a couple matches with you and, you, with, with you and uh, CCW, and um and there's a lot of stars over there um, at the moment, uh, such as uh, the Juicy Product, Drew Gulak, um, Shane Strickland, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is there um, a certain wrestler out there um, that you would like to see in, um, in the combat zone that you would like to wrestle? Well, it's funny. With, uh, with CZW Combat Zone, it's, it's kind of different than any other company because CZW has – pretty much every different style in the world. I mean, first and foremost, CZW is known for its death matches. And even though a lot of people don't like them, they're still, uh, in, they're still probably the best death match company in, and possibly the world. And they also have some of the best high flyers, AR Fox, Shane Strickland, and plenty of Lucky 13. And then we also have the technicians like myself, Drew Gulak, Timothy Thatcher's work there. So, I mean, CZW is the ultimate place where it's, if you don't like this, we have that for you. If you don't like that, well, we also have this for you. And, I mean, again, a lot of people aren't into the death match, and that's fine. I think, like I said earlier, we have great high flyers, great technicians. And as far as anybody, you know, in the world coming to CZW, I mean, the thing with CZW, it's not like Ring of Honor where it's, uh, you know, only contracted wrestlers can, can come in. I mean, anybody can work for CZW. So, I mean, the, the possibilities right there are endless of who can come in. I mean, I think when you saw Drew Bulek as champion, he had matches against Chris Hero, AJ Styles, um, and the likes of them. So, I mean, I, I really look forward to, to anybody. I, mean, I, I enjoy wrestling every different style. I like wrestling the deathmatch guys. I like wrestling the high flyers. I also like wrestling the technicians. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, as being the champion for CZW, I wrestle anybody. So, I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to anybody that they bring in. I'm just looking forward to having a good match with them. And I think, uh, you know, this year, say what you will about CZW, but I think the quality of matches that we've been putting on are really good. I mean, compared to the past, I mean, I do respect everything that CZW has done, you know, but I think right now we have some of the best wrestlers on the scene with CZW, whether it be deathmatch, high-flying, and technical. So, I mean, like I said before, anybody that wants to come to CZW and challenge me for the belt, I tell them, bring it on. Speaking of CZW, um, they have an event on the 23rd. Uh, Can you talk to us about that? Yes, sir. On the 23rd, I'm going to be defending the CZW world title against the CZW mainstay, the name of Joker, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not 100 percent familiar with Joker. I've seen uh, some of his matches, but I, I've never been in the ring with him, so this is gonna be a first time ever thing. And 
I don't know. I've uh, I've really enjoyed working with some of CZW's more notable guys. I wrestled Danny Havoc and uh, in Dayton, Ohio. I wrestled Matt Tremont at Beyond Wrestling and a Fans Bring the Weapons match. So I definitely uh, I definitely like working that style. And uh, I'm also going to try to challenge Joker to kind of work my style too. I mean, I I like to hit hard and I like to get uh, I like to get hit hard. So I mean, it's definitely going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, Again, I don't think the CZW fans are, are a big fan of me, but uh, either way, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to try to just work as hard as possible, and uh, we'll see what me and Joker can uh, can do together. Yeah, definitely. Man. Um, I see you have a couple shows lined up before um, before PWG. Also, uh, Northeast Wrestling, I believe you're going against Hanson, right? Yes, sir, Mr. Warbeard Hanson. He actually, uh, when I first started wrestling, he was responsible for training me. Him and uh, Brian Fury and Brian Malonis, who are three wrestlers out of the Northeast. And Warbeard at the time was actually known as Handsome Johnny. And uh, he used to come out and flex his pecs at people and flex his biceps at people when I first started wrestling. So he's uh, he's made quite the change into the Warbeard these days. But, uh, I mean, I've wrestled him probably, I want to say up there, I mean, I think I've wrestled with him almost as much as anybody I've ever wrestled. So, I mean, he's uh, we definitely have a storied rivalry, and uh, we always have pretty good matches. There's one on YouTube we actually had for our big-time wrestling a little while ago, if you want to check it out. I thought it was really good. And uh, I don't know. He's just a big, strong kid. He's been wrestling for years. He's uh, he's very good, so I'm really looking forward to that. But this is actually my debut for uh, for NEW, so I'm really looking forward to coming to Bethany and, uh, and getting in there with the Warbeard. I think, uh, I think it's going to be a good one. Definitely. Uh, go ahead, Oscar. Yes, uh, my next question I ask you, now that you are the CCW champion, PWG, in the end of this month, I, w- I wanted to ask you, what is your next goal? Is, 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 is like a certain country you like to visit, or is there, what is next for you? I mean, uh, I, I'm going over to uh, England and Germany in October, actually, uh, representing CCW. Hopefully still the champion on um Confident that I still will be champion, but uh, I'm actually doing World <laughs> Triangle League. It's uh, in Oberhausen, Germany. It's going to be CZW, Big Japan, and WXW, and uh, that's going to be from the second to the fifth, I believe. And then uh, from there, we're heading over to England, and we're wrestling for Southside and Title Wrestling, and uh, I think that's going to be from the seventh to the twelfth. And that was a huge goal for me. Uh, one of the dreams as I was a little kid it was to go overseas to be a pro wrestler. And now it's uh, in October, it's happening. So that's definitely, uh, I'm definitely super excited for that. Um, as far as goals, I mean, I definitely want to represent CZW and I want to, you know, have the best title matches the company has ever had in its history. That is first and foremost my goal thing with CZW. Going to PWG, of course, uh, I mean, I think that this show, Battle of Los Angeles, is the biggest independent wrestling show in, I mean, I don't know how many years. You have the best wrestlers in the entire world. I mean, if you look at this lineup of this show, this is one of the best independent wrestling lineups I've ever seen. And, uh, I mean, if you look at the talent on the show, it's going to be insane. I mean, I know you guys said you've been to Reseda before. I've never been, but I, I'm pretty sure that these Reseda fans, I know their reputation of being, they're being an unbelievable crowd. But with, with this talent in Reseda, I mean... I'm on the show, and I'm—I mean, I'm super excited just to watch some of these matches. I mean, I had a first-round match against Roddy, uh, Roderick Strong. I wrestled him uh, a couple times before, once in a tag where he actually knocked me out cold, legitimately, with a drop kick. Uh, and probably in the first ten minutes of a tag match, it's, it's for Beyond Wrestling at point in no return. It was me and Drew Gulak versus Eddie. Edwards and uh, Roger Strong and uh, Roddy knocked me clear clean out with a drop kick out like a like a light and then uh, we actually wrestled again on a singles match for FIP a couple months later and unfortunately uh, I had just come off a knee injury and he had just come off a big uh, neck injury wrestling AJ Styles we were both kind of beat up but uh, we did the best we could but uh, I think now yeah. we're both healthy we're both ready to rock and I mean. To me, and in my opinion, I mean, this show is probably going to be one of the biggest shows of the year. So I'm going all in. I'm, I'm, I'm packing my my machine gun. I'm bringing my missiles. Uh, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have all guns blazing for this one because, I mean, I think if you win Bola, if you look at the the history of guys who've done well in Bola, they've gone on, gone on to do some pretty amazing things in pro wrestling. So I mean, I am ready to 
to go all in. And then we got the big non-tournament tag match, me and Drew Gulak versus Elgin and uh, Cage. And, I mean, of course, Elgin is a Ring of Honor world champion. Me, I think that the CZW world championship is the better title, and I want to prove that against Ring of Honor. I want to prove that against Michael Elgin at PWG. Brian Cage is their boy, too. So I think that me and uh, Drew have a lot to prove at PWG, not just for ourselves, but representing CZW as well. I mean, who, CZW is our home, along with Beyond Wrestling, so we want to go there and show people that, you know, the best wrestlers aren't from Ring of Honor, the best wrestlers aren't from PWG, the best wrestlers are from where we're from. So, I mean, I think me and Drew definitely have uh, have our work cut out for us, but we're excited. We're very, very excited. PWG, again, this show, uh, it's going to be unbelievable. I mean, whether we do good or bad it is, is really not the issue. I mean, it's our issue, but, I mean, I think the show, no matter what, it is going to be great, and I just can't wait for it. Yeah, definitely. And when you say that you're about to go all out, I'm like thinking, damn, now my money's already worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot of guys have that attitude. And this is one of the biggest shows in a long, long time. So, I mean, I think that a lot of guys are going to have the same attitude as me. So, I mean, I think with that with that attitude, everyone's going to win. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to go pass it to Tom now. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Uh, my next question, uh, going away from Super BG for a little bit, going back to TZW, uh, earlier this year at a Best of the Best, you got a chance to uh, wrestle a Mr. Drake Younger, a CZW legend in his own mind, and made a name for himself after CZW, and, you know, was doing good stuff these days. What was it like just getting in the ring with Drake and being around Drake as a person, because... And anybody who's been around Drake just says that he's just he's smiling all the time and he just brings out all these good vibes. Absolutely, I think too. Uh, I mean, Drake to me had like a certain aura about him. He, he of course did a lot of the death matches and he had built a, you know a huge name for himself not only in you know, CZW in Philadelphia, New Jersey, then also going out to California PWG. So I mean, he definitely was a uh, he's a big name to get in the ring with, and uh, you know it was funny. Um, before our match, uh, there was supposed to be another match, but it got cut. So we kind of went on a lot earlier than we thought we were going on. And, uh, I mean, it was just, uh, Drake's amazing. He's uh, such a great person, first of all. Uh, just a great attitude, very positive about life. But he's also just a phenomenal wrestler. And uh, for the time we had to prepare for our match, I mean, also wrestling two other matches, just showed how tough he was and how talented he was. I mean, it, that match at Best of the Best is probably one of the first really good matches I ever had at PWG, and it was, I mean, 100% thanks to Drake Younger. He's just, he's an unbelievable wrestler. He's a better person. I uh, I love Drake. I mean, uh, he did so much for me for that short time that I was in the ring with him, and uh, I'm just so happy for his success now. He probably deserves it. And in WWE now, he's, uh, you know, I know he's there with his family, just loving life and, and doing well, and I just wish the best for him. I hope he continues to do great, and I just, I love seeing him on, uh, on NXT. I hope to see him on the uh, big show soon. Yeah, you know me myself as um, as a fan. You know, I would say Drake is probably one of the nicest wrestlers that I've like met. Like going oh, to yeah, shows, yeah. like he's cool. You know, um, yeah, I love and that. and I'm hoping maybe one day uh, when Drake uh, refs a match, you know, I, I don't know where you hear Drake, Drake. Drake, Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure we're going to hear it. Uh, I think it's just a matter of time. <laughs> um, I have a, uh, a question. It actually um, has to do with um, PWG. Uh, after um, the um, the uh, BOLA tournament, uh, is it a possibility that Biff Music will be a PWG regular? I hope so, man. I, mean, I think that, uh, that that depends on my performance at BOLA. I mean, I, if I do well, I'm, I'm certainly uh, expected to be asked back. Uh, if I don't do well, then, you know, that's a horse of a different color. But I uh, I fully expect to do very well. I mean, I just confident in myself. It's not an ego thing. It's not a cocky thing. I just, I'm going to go in there knowing that I'm going to give 100% and that when I do that, good things will happen. So, I mean, I fully expect to be asked back. And, uh, I mean, every time I go there, every time I wrestle in general, I just give 110%. So, I'm hoping to do more of the same at PWG. And, uh, you know, I got some tough competition, but uh, those guys are unbelievable. So, I think I think we're all going to do pretty well. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping definitely that I, that I get asked back. Absolutely. Yeah, that that definitely would would, would be sweet. Um, I have one more question. Um, so there's 24 guys in this tournament. If you had a choice yeah. to pick 
um, who you can wrestle in the tournament in the in the first round? Who, who would it be? Well, I mean, I do got Roddy, and I have to say, I mean, for me, in my opinion, one of the best matches I've ever, or best series of matches I've ever had in my career is against Eddie Edwards. And uh, Eddie and Roddy, obviously, are, are, are very similar. They, they tag together as a dojo, but it's a very similar style. So, I mean, if I really wanted to, and I mean, that's my style. I like stiff, I like hard, I like Japanese style, that pro wrestling Noah type of style that Eddie brings to the table. I think that me and Roddy are kind of on the same page as that. So, if you're into stiff, hard-hitting wrestling, I think that's what me and Roddy are going to do in that first round. And I don't think I could have picked a better opponent than Roddy in the first round. I'm really, really looking forward to wrestling Roddy. Oh, okay. Uh, go ahead, uh, Oscar. All right. Uh, before I ask him my question, I actually got a question from, from a listener. Um, this is from Josh. He wants me to ask you, uh, he's planning to go to BOLA, and he wants me to ask you, is there any chance you're going to be bringing any Biff Rules shirt at, at Reseda? Oscar, it's not only just a yeah, it's a oh hell yeah. I'm bringing oh. yellow Biff Rule shirts, I'm bringing black Biff Rule shirts, I'm bringing red Biff Rule tank tops from sizes small to 4XL. So I'm going to bring a hell of a lot of shirts, some tank tops, definitely Biff Rule stuff's going to be there. So if you uh, if you want to get some, I will have them, absolutely. All right, uh, all right. All right there you go, Josh. Um, shout out to oh, Josh, hell yeah. Yeah, shout out to Josh, and he like, it looks like he's gonna buy a Biff Rules shirt out, out there. Yeah, appreciate it, Josh. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> All right, uh, my next question I want to ask you. Um, I, I want to ask you an evolved question now. Um, it, 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 this Red Robin tournament you just had—I mean, it was awesome. I enjoyed every match pretty much. Uh, you and Gulak and Thatcher, and uh, it sucked that the rules had to end that that you. Because uh, you beat Gulak, that you had to win the whole thing. Um, my next question, but but the question that really to evolve. Want to ask you is that is there any goals in evolve that you want to accomplish, like either winning the evolve title or possibly win, going after the the open the Freedom Gate Championship? Absolutely. I mean, I think. You'd be lying to yourself. You're doing yourself a disservice in wrestling if your goal wasn't to any company you work for be the best guy. If that means to hold their best championship, then that's definitely my goal. I want to I wanna be the best in any company I work for. Now, with Evolve, we're kind of doing a little bit of a – going in a new direction with this uh, with this reboot. And uh, for yeah. me, I mean, a lot of, like I said earlier, a lot of people like to kind of throw me in with the style of Drew Gulak and Tim Thatcher, and I love that style of wrestling. I can, uh, I, I love all different styles of wrestling. But uh, for me personally, I like to be able to, you know, plan to evolve with whoever I'm wrestling. So if I'm, if it's a technician, I like to wrestle, you know, the technical style. If it's a high flyer, I like to adapt to them. If it's a deathmatch guy, I like to adapt to them. I just like to be able to wrestle against anybody. So evolve with this reboot, how they want to go with the more. Uh, Technical, realistic style. I'm uh, I'm all for it. I love it. It's uh, it's just a different way to wrestle, and it's not everybody's cup of tea. But I mean, I think if you have an open mind and you give it a chance, it's something that you can really enjoy. Um, I mean, if that's not for you, Evolve also has again some of the best high flyers, of course, with Ricochet. And this is Evan Bourne on the show. They also have guys like Chris Hero, uh, Caleb Conley. I mean, there's so much awesome talent involved that it might oh, not. Yeah. Some of the nights. Yeah, exactly. Tony Meese was awesome. I mean, there's so many guys there that are awesome that, I mean, if you don't like, you know, the certain style of match like the Round Robin tournament, there's other matches there that I'm sure that you'll definitely enjoy. And, again, involved with this reboot, we're trying something different. We're trying to, uh, you know, just to, to be different than the other companies. I mean, I think that CZW has its deathmatch niche. I think that PWG has, has its kind of lighthearted dream, mat nit, dream match niche, excuse me. And I think Evolve is trying to go a different direction, try to just be different than the other companies. And uh, I'm all for it. I like uh, I like trying new things, and I think that, uh, I mean, again, I, I want to be I want to be uh, doing the technical style like Gulak and Thatcher, but I also would love to wrestle Ricochet for his belt. I also love to wrestle Drew McIntyre for his title, wrestle all those different styles and just, you know, make good wrestling. I, I'm a huge fan of wrestling. I'm a huge, huge fan of every different style of wrestling. And I think Evolve really has some cool styles that they're working with right now so i'm just really happy to be with them and i'm looking forward they're doing another run of shows in new york uh, i believe next month in september and I, I believe i'm wrestling chris hero so i'm really looking forward to that one 
That 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 one should be pretty good because it's kind of funny because a fan wanted me to ask you a question, but I wasn't going to ask you that question. But Chris Hero actually got in the mention. I'm pretty sure you saw it on Twitter. Oh yeah, I saw that on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, man, Chris is uh, Chris is a phenomenal wrestler. I have nothing but respect for him. But I, I'm really looking forward to getting ready with him. I mean, I, I I've heard his reputation of being a hard hitter, and I think I'm making a reputation of being a very very hard hitter. So. Uh, that will be definitely be a fun one. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely looking forward to you and Chris Hill go at it. Hell yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and also, me, uh, me and Skits over here, we're planning to go to um, uh, WrestleMania weekend and uh, go check out some Evolve shows. Hopefully at that time you are, either you're getting the title shot or you're the champion, either the Evolve champ or the, oh, oh ah, sorry. Open the Freedom Geek Championship, so let's see what happens at that time. So, oh yeah, man, I think too, I think there. Evolve, I think Evolve is one of the only independent wrestling groups that are running uh, out in California for WrestleMania weekend. So it's going to be, I think we're going to get some awesome crowds and it's going to be some awesome wrestling. So yeah, I mean, I, I hope I'm at the top of the card and I hope I'm, uh, I'm hope we're having a good time. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah definitely. Cool. So, yeah, let's see what happens out there. So let's get our fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to go pass it to Tom. Go ahead, Tom. All right, well, my next question uh, has to deal with someone in particular. You've mentioned him a couple of times already, uh, Mr. Drew Gulak. Over the years, you know, you and him have wrestled in different promotions. You've wrestled everywhere. Um, you're going to be actually teaming up with him in PWG. But my question is, what what is it, do you think, about – you're in him matches that kind of gives a different feel, makes it a little bit special. And did you guys see this initially, or did it take some time to kind of see that you and him could click in the ring? That's actually a great question, man. Uh, it's funny, you said it's been a couple of years. And I just It just blows my mind. I can't believe it's been more than a couple of years since me and Drew first wrestled. It feels like it was not that long ago at all. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I... I don't know. When when I first met Drew, it was just kind of like, hey, we're wrestling today. Let's go out there and do our thing. And uh, I don't know, man. Drew has a real technical style, and and the way that I was was trained to wrestle was just being able to adapt to whoever you're wrestling. So I think that uh, I don't know. We just it was just a match made in heaven. We 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 meshed really well, and uh, I don't know. It's not like we meant to do this style that we were doing. It just kind of happened that way. And then the more we wrestled each other, the more it evolved. And uh, I don't know, man. Drew is like, I tell people he's like my brother. When me and my brother were kids, we used to just beat the crap out of each other. We didn't know, you know, what we were doing. We used to beat the crap out of each other. And that's uh, that's what me and Drew are like. He, I love him like he's my brother, but uh, when we get in the ring, we definitely go 100%. We hit each other as hard as we can, and we just try to let the best man win. And, uh, man, it's crazy. I've, I've got to travel all around the country with Drew, and I get to go, you know, to Europe with him in October with CZW, and it's just, it's crazy. I, uh, I can't put into words how just just happy I am and how proud I am of both of us. I mean, Drew has uh, he's worked really hard too. He has a great background of training with uh, with Mike Quackenbush and uh, with CZW. I mean, he's been all around the world too. So I mean, it's uh, I've learned from him uh, just as much as I think he may have learned from me. I think we just I don't know. It's uh, it's crazy. I just if you would have asked me, you know, when we first met each other, if we were going to be doing this, I, I would have called you crazy. But uh, I don't know. It's it's just fun. We're having a lot of fun right now. And I look forward to, to getting in there with them again. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wanted to also ask, uh, while we're still on the subject, you know, you faced him a number of times, but like I said, you're going to be teaming up with him in PWG on night two against the unbreakable effing machines um, of Brian Cage and Michael Elgin. Have you guys kind of discussed uh, yet what you guys are going to be doing to uh, take down the effing machines? Because they're uh, pretty intimidating uh, for the most part, I would say. Hell yeah, and me and Drew have not teamed with each other that much. It's crazy that we're teaming at PWG. We've only teamed twice, ever. We've teamed uh, both in Beyond Wrestling. Once was against uh, Flip Kendrick and um, his brother, and the other time was against uh, the Dojo Bros, Eddie Edwards and uh, and Roderick Strong. So I mean, we don't really uh, we don't really have a lot of stuff that we do together just because we don't team that much. We pretty much just go out there and just fight. So I mean, I don't know if. Uh, if that style's gonna get a bode well, or if because uh, I know that uh, Cage and, and Elgin have a lot of stuff to do together, but me and Drew are just uh, 
we like to just romp and stomp. So, I mean, it's going to be definitely very interesting. Uh, definitely a very interesting match. But me and Drew, we don't. Uh, we just kind of go in there and do our thing. So I mean, as far as uh, us having a discussion about our, our strategy, I mean, again, we just we go in there and just and just throw hands. So it's going to be. It's definitely going to be a very interesting uh, clash of styles between us and uh, Elgin and Cage. Yeah, it 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 definitely should um, be interesting because I I believe Brian Cage he can wrestle any style too because the guy did a fucking six foot nine like I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes he did it was crazy <laughs> yeah um, before we let you go we got a couple questions from um, a couple followers uh, you mind uh, uh, followers and, and uh, let's start off with uh, Shining Wizards. Uh, they wanted us to uh, ask you. Um, they would love to hear uh, how you were invited to uh, to a PWG Bola. Um, actually, first, I love the guys at Shining Wizards. They're good dudes. They sent me a, a shirt, so I have to say thank you to them. Um, PWG just out of the blue, they uh, they emailed me and uh, and uh, I talked to a guy by the name of Danny, and he said that uh, you know he got my contact from Drew Gulak, so Drew Gulak. Uh, Forwarded my information, and then from there, he just asked me if I wanted to uh, participate in bowling. And I said, "Oh hell yeah!" Just like Stone Cold would say. So <laughs> as easy as that, man. It was just uh, one day, it just hit me up, and, and that was that. So uh, yeah, man. I'm just again. I just if you would have asked me a year ago if I'd be wrestling for PWG, I would have laughed in your face. But uh, you know, I'm just I'm really really happy to be going out to receive. I can't wait to uh, wrestle in front of that crowd. That crowd is legendary as far as reaction goes. So I just. I can't wait to do my thing in front of them. Definitely. Um, next question was actually uh, from uh, Justin uh, on Twitter. He says, uh, how nervous are you debuting for PWG um, at uh, the most stacked bowler uh, in quite some time? It's funny. I, I don't know if nervous is the right word. I, I just get really, really fired up. I... Uh, I don't know, man. I I think when I first started wrestling, I would get nervous, but now I just I get really really excited. Like if I was gonna play, like I don't know, in a big game or something like that. I just I, I'm really really excited. I, I don't think nervous is the right way to describe it. I'm just fired up. Like I'm ready to to go all in. Like I said, so it's uh, it's awesome, man. I mean, California is obviously you know a blast. PWG is known as one of the best indies out there. Some of the best talent in the world. One of the biggest shows ever on the indies. I'm, I'm, I'm just happy, man. I'm just happy to be there. I'm just pumped. It's, it's going to be a blast. All right. Um, we got a couple, a couple more questions here from, from uh, some more fans. Um, cool. Andy Roy. Um, his question is, uh, how do you expect to, uh, res- to, um, how do you expect the uh, PW, the um, PWG crowd? To uh, to be to you. You know, I think uh, I think they're going to be cool with me. They, they sound like they like good wrestling, and uh, I think that I give good wrestling. So I think uh, I think we're going to get along just fine. Uh, PWG, the crowd seems to be one of the best on the indies, and uh, I mean, you have asked any wrestler, I mean, the crowd is everything. The crowd makes everything, and to be able to wrestle in front of a crowd like that, it just makes us work that much harder. So uh, I'm just excited, man. I hope. Uh, I hope it goes well, and I think that I think me, like I said before, me and the other uh, crowd are gonna get along just fine. I'm gonna tell you like this, Beth. I'm a PWG regular, and I'm already welcoming you, and you haven't been there yet, so you're already welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. I really yeah, Beth, that. And, I, and, and I just want to let you know that it, once the crowd loves you, they're gonna love you forever. It doesn't matter; they will love you the next awesome, 35 man. years. I'll show you an example of Frankie Kazarian. He made his return, and when he before he wrestled, there was a, and this is an uncensored show, but there was a fuck TNA chant. So, <laughs> you know, that's so how many finishes and show um, Frankie Kazarian. So once they love you, they're going to love you forever. <laughs> and, that's, and that's why I love pro wrestling, man. I mean, there's no crowd in the world. I don't care what sport you like, what you're into. There's no crowd in the world like a pro wrestling crowd. I mean, I'll get in front of pro wrestling crowds and they and they bring tears to my eyes sometimes because they're just so passionate and they just they just love pro wrestling. I'm the same way. I I love pro wrestling. I just I love it so much and be able to be with a group of people that feel the same way about something. It gets me fired up. It just gets me very emotional. So I can't wait, man. It's it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm even looking forward to it. And you know, I see you here on the East Coast and beyond, and CZW and sometimes Evolve, and it's like. 
all right, I want to see him in PWG now because that crowd that crowd's gonna be red hot for everybody. Absolutely. And you know, once they see you picking the shit out of someone, I think <laughs> Awesome, man. I can't wait. It's it's gonna be awesome. And I think that is the last question. I think that is the last oh one more. Um this is not actually a question. Um our friends from uh the Weekly Wrestling Podcast, uh they wanted uh me to tell you what's up and um uh, good luck. And uh Absolutely, they're really- man. I love those guys. Those those guys are good people. They uh they they're just good guys. I love them. They definitely are my my new source for uh for my Twitter wrestling, so I appreciate it from those guys. They're good dudes. Yeah. Definitely, man. Um, uh, before we let you go, uh, do you want to throw out your Twitters um, or anything like that? Uh, maybe uh, Pro Wrestling Tees so the fans can uh, look out for you? Yeah, I mean, I think the best thing to do for me is I'm such a uh, – I, I kind of do it all. I do Facebook. I do uh, Twitter. I do Instagram. Just uh, please Google just Biff Busick, and all my, my top things will pop up. And then some other cool sites that I don't run myself but other people run. Just Google Biff Busick, and uh, I don't know, just take a look around, do a little bit of exploring. I'm a regular on Twitter. I uh, regularly go on Facebook. I regularly go on Instagram. I don't, they're not all connected. They're all separate, so – if you're into those things, check those out. And uh, yeah, man, please just continue to support independent wrestling. Without you guys, we are nothing. We need you guys to come out there. We need you guys to be excited for the shows. We need you guys to show up because I mean, you guys are the ones that make the shows. We're the reason. I mean, you guys are the reason why we work hard. So I mean, please just keep supporting indie wrestling. Keep supporting pro wrestling. And I just want to say thanks for for coming out to the shows and showing support. Even podcasts like this. Just to get the word out, I mean, I just really appreciate you guys what you do. So I just want to say thank you, and uh, I look forward to seeing everybody at the shows. Thanks, uh, man. No, thank, uh, thank you, man. We have one more question from this guy named Skits. He wants Let's to know, where are you going to get uh, him for his birthday? <laughs> what, what was, wait, what was that again? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. <laughs> Skits wants to know, where are you going to get him for his birthday? On I'm going to get him for his birthday? It, that's me. I'm just joking. His birthday is PWG Bowl a weekend. <laughs> hey, you know, I'll have, I'll have some Biff Rule shirts with me. Maybe we can we can work something out. All right, definitely, man. Um, yeah. Well, well, me and Oscar will be there all three shows, so we'll see you then, man. I can't wait, man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we have some fun. I know we will. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. All right, man. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Thanks for being on the show, guys man. Thanks for having me on again. Man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, man. Have a good one, guys. All right, take care, Biff. That was Biff Music, ladies and gentlemen. Cool dude, man. Yeah, that's fucking great, man. That's that's a cool dude. Now now I want it back already. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I I was just going to say, I was going to be like, all right, I want to ask him some more questions, man. We were cutting it early, and I was like, ah, I want to ask more questions. Hey, fuck it, we'll bring him back in. And me and Skits are going to end up meeting him, so it's going to be freaking cool. So can't wait. Yeah, man. Um, a lot of shit going on this weekend and the weekend after PWG uh, is coming soon. Um, but yeah, man, we've got a pretty good interview here. Um, let's take a real quick break and uh, we can get back to some uh, shooting shit or, or or like whatnot. Right. Right back. This is the Juice JT Dunn, and you're listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. Four Quarters Radio is the home for the best professional wrestling and independent wrestling. Discussions and coverage. Billy, Ant, Martin, and Sam bring you three of the best podcasts every week. The Four Corners Raw Roundtable, The Indie Project, and The Saturday Freestyle. Along with the podcast, FourCornersWrestling.com is designed with all wrestling fans in mind. Future articles, videos, the weekly shows, and much more. Four Corners and Wrestling Heads are teaming up to bring you wrestling's next revolution. Are you ready? Welcome back to WH Radio. Shoot the shit Wednesdays. I am scared. Mm-hmm. That is Tom and that yep. is fucking Oscar. Um, yeah. Early fucking show. Uh, it feels weird because the fucking light is still out outside. You know, it's not as dark yet. No, not really. But we're we're uh, freaking. Uh, <laughs> Tom hey, you guys just tell me, listen, it is, it is pitch black over here, so <laughs> I'm going to be talking about that. Yeah. It's pitch black over here on the East Coast. All the East Coast people know what I'm talking about. They're living the yeah. night life. 
Yeah, and I just heard about the whole uh, rain situation. It's funny. It's like we're getting, we're not getting no rain here, and we're having a little water drop out here in California, and you guys are getting tons of it. So I'm like, shit. <laughs> you know what? That's one of that's one of the cons of living in California. But you know what? You guys get beautiful weather all year round. You don't have to deal with twenty degree weather in the in the winter time. Oh, so, no, you know what? No. I, I don't want to hear your complaint. <laughs> well, I, I just well, when me and Skits go to WrestleMania, I want to see how how you can handle thirty degree weather up in the Bay Area because I don't know if you can handle it, and it's going to be in the end of March, hey, I, so I don't I, know if you can. I, I, I've actually well, they, they, they had it in uh, New York City, so if they can have it in New York City, they can have it anywhere. I'm, yeah, but the Bay Area, it's like, it's it's, it's a different space. It's, it's way different in Los Angeles, I'll tell you that. But the Bay Area, the Bay it's, Area. It's, it's real cool. Yeah, just to watch a damn Dodger at Giant game. Yeah, I've been there, like, there. It was a whole weekend. <laughs> it was a whole weekend. And, and, yeah. and, and shit, the fucking river's right there, right there at... Uh, with the fucking Giants play, so right now I be like I've been there in an August before, and I swear to God I was wearing a jacket out there. So in San Francisco, if you're wearing a jacket in August, that's like wow. That to me is like wow. So, <laughs> but anyways, Rish, this is just the shit. This is a wrestling podcast, not no fucking weather shit. <laughs> but um, I know everybody's like, what the wait, fuck. Wait. So what you guys? You guys end up watching any shit this weekend, like New Japan or fucking Evolve? Because I, I I saw them all pretty much. Yeah, I finished up watching the G1 Climax. Um, I saw a little bit of the Evolve, but I was you know I, I was still on kind of like a hangover from the G1 Climax just because you know that was three weeks of just wrestling and then combined shit, that with yeah. you know, WWE and TNA. And, you know, I was kind of on a wrestling hangover, so hopefully I get to catch up on <laughs> Evolve. Hopefully I get to catch up on Evolve, but, I mean, the G1 Climax, holy shit. It, it was just, you know, we said it last night, it was just the best wrestling tournament that has ever that has ever happened. You know, and I, you know what, as good as it was, PWG Bola, even though it's three days, I know you can't really compare the two. But PWG Bola is definitely gonna compete with that for uh, for shows of the year. Damn right. I'm like, I know it's just three it's three days straight. New Japan, they they just like they, the the tournament. It's not only in one venue; they just move different venues, and that's why they're doing it like three weeks. So, yeah, it was in PWG. You just stay in one venue, and they they able to do it in three days. But we'll see what happens in Bola, like. Will that top G1? We'll see. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. But back to New Japan for a second. It, it was a real great tournament. I mean, I was like, holy shit, when this shit's going to end? You know, you got Ishii going against another person this day and that day. You got Doc going in this day and that day. I'm like, fuck, you know. So then um, you got to give props to Okada. He won the whole entire thing, and he's the, this is the second time winning it. So, um yeah, you give that pass to Okada, and it, Okada's he's having a great year, even though he did lost the the title just a few months back. But going back to Wrestle Kingdom when he had a great match, and so then he's just having a great year, and he end, ended up coming in America to perform in the Ring of Honor crowd. So I, I think Okada does deserve it. I don't know any what you guys thoughts of it, but or do you guys prefer another winner? But I. I I actually believe Okada did deserve winning the whole G1 climax. Um, yeah, I, I think Okada was a a good choice. I think honestly, if it came down to you know like Okada or Nakamura, whoever won that, I think either one of them deserved it. So it was kind of like a win-win situation. You know, whoever won won it, and you're going to be happy with it. What do you think? It makes sense uh, for Okada to win. Basically, you know, AJ Styles won. He beat him for the IWGP heavyweight title. You know, it's kind of like yeah. revenge or whatnot. So uh, he's going to basically he, he wins the G1 Climax. I'm not sure how it goes. Do you, uh, when you win a G1 Climax, does that mean that um, you um, get a shot at the title? But yeah, yeah so. you get when she won the G1 Climax, you get a shot at the IWGP Heavyweight Title 
I believe, at Wrestle Kingdom. That's what I believe it is, because last year, NATO won, and he got a shot at the IWGP heavyweight title against Okada on Wrestle Kingdom. So I think that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, you know, it just, just like I said, it makes sense because, you know, it's kind of like the storyline, you know. Um, so basically, you just revenge, basically, you know, because Okada kind of kind of had trouble, you know, getting his title back since he lost it. So maybe he'll get it here. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually thinking that he will. And I, I, only, I also believe I think AJ only signed a one-year deal with New Japan, so... Speaking Ron of AJ, Ray. I can tell you his his um his um calendar, like how it's looking right now. Cause this guy's busy. Yeah, go for, for it. Yeah, well, go for it. I already know it, so <laughs> we already know. Um, he has Phil of Honor this weekend, and then uh, Ring of Honor on the twenty second. They go to Milwaukee. Twenty third, they'll be in Chicago. Then you know PWG. He's twenty ninth and and uh, and the thirtieth. Uh, no, excuse me, the twenty ninth. Actually, the thirtieth, he leaves. He leaves Los Angeles and goes to fucking Canada. And comes I thought he right goes to Portland. Back. No, Canada. He sure? goes to Canada. I thought he goes to Port- Portland. It's Canada. I'm looking at it right here. <laughs> I swear to God, go- I thought it was Portland. He goes to Canada, and then he comes back to L.A. Now that's some crazy shit. What? That is some fucking dedication right there. You know, you leave one city to go to another city to come back to a city. That's some I fucking respect that. And then you have ROH in September of six. He's got NWA September thirteenth, the twenty first back to, to New Japan. Twenty seventh back to ROH. Superstars of wrestling. Um, that's in the UK. So he goes to the UK, back to ROH, and then back to New Jersey. He'll be. Back to the UK again, like I fucking love AJ Styles for this. Like, mad respect. Like, I can't wait to the end of the year so we can do our, you know, WH Top 100 because he's going to be somewhere where he was not last year. Because you know, la- last year, if I could bring out our ranks from last year, he for sure wasn't, you know, one of the top guys of the year on our ranks. Yeah. It- just, how much, just imagine how much the money he's making. Like I, I read that he, he asked for twenty five hundred to appear in North America. Just imagine Japan paying him. I bet Japan's paying him way more than that. So, yeah. um, just imagine all that money he's making in a fucking year. I'm like, yeah. God fucking he, damn. There was a report. Uh, I think it was about a month ago, probably more, that he's already made more money in a half a year than he would have made in a whole year of TNA. Yeah. 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 So, you know what? Yeah. TNA's boss is the wrestling world's game. Yep. And TNA, they want to pay him that much, so there you go. They, they just yeah. want to give a big, huge pay cut. Let me ask you guys a question <laughs> about AJ Styles. What was the last thing you guys... Never mind. I, I, it just came back to me, what they were doing with AJ Styles before he left. He was going against fucking Magnus. Yeah. He was the world oh, champion. I was, he lost I, was trying to, I was trying to forget that ever happened. <laughs> I, like, but I wanted remember? to get your, your guys' opinion on something that happened on the last day of the G1 Climax. Uh, we had a new member of the Bullet Club, and, uh, Mr. Jeff Jarrett. Uh, what do you guys think of this? Well, it's actually two members. It's, it's Jeff Jarrett and oh. Scott Demore, and yeah, and, um, yeah it, and I was shocked. I didn't get, see it, didn't see this coming. Like, holy shit! It's like another NWO thing going on there. And it was funny that um, while he was while he was just with the Bullet Club after he hit Tanahashi with the freaking guitar, um, that guy that that can charge a new Japan show them on on. They showed up on the in the commentary thing, and he made that deal with Jeff Jarrett with, with Global Force Wrestling. So I want to know, is this going to relate to Global Force Wrestling or Probably. what's going on here? Because, like I said, Global it's gotta, Force Wrestling is doing... It's got to be helping Global Force because Global Force made that deal, so it has to. Yeah, and not only that, Global Force 
he did deals with, like with other companies in in Africa. And I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think they did a, did a deal with with Triple uh, A. They did. Um, yeah. So I, I him joining the Bullet Club. I don't know where is this going. What what I used to go for is wrestling, but. Interesting to see what's going to go down, and hopefully when he, the next show, he explains why he joined Bullet Club, so, um, I'm not saying, I, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't want him in Bullet Club or anything like that, I just, I just got to figure out what's going on here. I do you know? <laughs> people were upset about it, I saw on Twitter, people were like, you oh, killed something. I was going to, I was going to get to that, I, honestly, I hated this, I hated this so much, I don't care if this is a, a, you know, combination, uh, a union between New Japan and Global Force. First of all, what have we heard about Global Force? Nothing but rumors and speculation. When is Jeff Jarrett going to announce something, announce TV, announce that it's going to take another six months to announce the next thing? Like, Jesus Christ, can we just get something along the lines of this? And you know what? The Bullet Club to me was something that was a little cool, you know, with Devitt starting it out, and, you know, they did start expanding on members. You know, they added Tamatonga, and they uh, eventually got rid of Devitt, added AJ Styles and Yujihiro Takahashi. But now it's becoming the NWO, but in a bad way, where they're just putting in all these guys. And it's like, this this isn't what I want to see from New Japan, you know? Because so, on, the, on the last day of G1, I noticed this. On the last day of G1, I would say maybe besides the AJ Styles and uh, Shinsuke Nakamura Okada match, it wasn't that great of a show. And then, you know, they're doing things that are very WWE-esque, you know. And I don't want to see something like WWE in New Japan. I want to see New Japan style. You know, you can have staples in New Japan, which they do. They have Chaos, they have Suzuki Gun, of course, at the Bullet Club. But now it's just like, it's. I think it's just getting a little ridiculous. Well, I, I you could see a little ripoff, but I can see something like, you see if TNA, TNA does go out of business and Samoa Joe's a free agent, and he decided to go to New Japan. I can actually see Samoa Joe joining Bullet Club. I can actually can see that happening. You know, I can see like a couple of you can say cycles of TNA becoming Bullet Club because of AJ Styles. So who knows? Hey, fuck it. Well, they might bring in somebody, Daniel somebody, and somebody, and they'll somebody like Club. that. Somebody like Samoa Joe, or even like an Austin Aries, someone that's still wrestling and still has a lot of talent. I could see. Okay, it makes sense to put them in the Bullet Club. But Jeff Jarrett and Scott Demore, I, I don't care about that. Like I don't care about that. You know, Jeff Jarrett's like I said, still going on about this global force wrestling, and he's been touting it and praising it and saying you know all these great things about it. And what do we know about it except that its logo looks like it's from 1998? Wow. Yeah. That's uh, it. You know, I'm not trying uh, to bash the promotion. It's just I would like, you know, some updates on it. Yeah, I, I believe they're supposed to make some kind of announcement during the fall about, like, when will it actually start. Because, I mean, I, like, I, I, rumors are already going around that possibly in the beginning of 2015 it's going to start. We can barely hear you, bro. I, you hear me now? You sounds like you're, like, way far away from the phone. I'm, I'm actually got the phone in my ear, so you can hear me now. Yep. Good. All right. Now, that's what I was saying. It just seems like uh, they might make an announcement in the fall, and that announcement could be when it's going to start. And and there was been, like, when this whole thing started, that they were saying beginning of 2015 is going to start. So let's see what happens. So we got to wait and see. Yeah, I just, I didn't, I didn't like Jeff Jarrett joining the Bullet Club. It just, it just left a little sour taste in my mouth. But, you know, that's just, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, see what happens. Um, but there was a couple of Ring of Honor guys on that show. You, you had, um, you had Cole and Bennett with Maria teaming up against um, Captain New Japan and Justin Thunder. 
which uh, the match was like all right to me, but I think you mentioned it. Uh, I don't know, it was yesterday or the day before, but you did mention it about how funny how you know Captain Com. I mean, I say Captin Com- Com- Cap- <laughs> Captain Comic Con. Captain New. Wow! Shout out, out to Captain Comic Con. <laughs> well, they all fucking wear masks. Shit. <laughs> wow. What the fuck? I- Captain, if Captain Comic Con is listening, he's probably laughing his ass off. So. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure um, wrestling fans that are listening are laughing their asses off. Hey, same shit. Captain Comic Con, Captain Comic. Too many captains. <laughs> but like you were saying, Captain New Japan, He, uh, I guess he had never seen Maria before, and when he saw her, his, uh, his jaw was dropped and he was hypnotized by her. Yeah. Yep, with that all that ass shaking and shit. So, hell yeah, Dang Tom, Maria. You know my, Tom, did you got my picture the other day? Yep, of you and Maria. Yeah, <laughs> I just, you know what, that had to be from Monday because you and um, Mark Cash were fucking mentioned by Maria. I was like, let me send this picture to both of these motherfuckers. There you go. <laughs> you know, you, you know what's funny? Oscar does that shit all the time. Like, whatever happens, like <laughs> he'll send a picture of him and that person. Like, get over it. Like. Who cares? <laughs> but also on the last day of G1 Climax, we had Red Dragon going against the Time Splitters. And, uh, match of the night. They, they put, the on, night. put on a very, very good match. Two of the best tag teams in the world. You know, you two, I mean, four of the best wrestlers in the world. How about that? You know, you got Kyle O'Reilly, you got Bobby Fish, you know, you got um, Kushida, and you got. Um, Alex Shelley, so, like, what more can you say? It's like, fuck, you know, I'm yeah. going to watch the match. I, like, as soon as you yeah, fucking yeah, see you this know, shit book, you're like, please fast forward and let's see the match already, you know? Yeah, yeah. you know, people people were saying that, you know, the match was great and all, but the only downside to the match was you kind of knew time splitters who were going to win because the IWGP junior tag titles were on the line. So, you you yeah, know, the Red Dragon was going to win it on his first time. I think it would have been better if they would have just made it a regular tag match. That way, it gives some, you know, suspension on if uh, you know Red Dragon can pull up the upset. You know, their first time in Japan. Yeah, but yeah, still, still be a nice. solid match. I can see Red Dragon going back though. Oh Hell yeah. yeah. Red they Dragon will. is just I, I, killing the game, dude. Like, they're really killing the game out there. Like, people, they might be the, I mean, the, the Bucks are, it's like them and the Bucks are, like, both the best tag teams in the world. I really can't choose. I love both tag teams. It's like, fuck, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Of course. And, yeah, so, hopefully one of these ace kids we can end up seeing Red Dragon wrestle in person. And, you, and, you, and for some reason, I don't think you don't want to see in the PWG, but who knows? I actually want to see them go against each other at PWG. That's just me. <laughs> and well, G One oh. Climax is over. It was like I said once again a fantastic tournament. Anybody that didn't see it, you have to go back and watch it. Um, check out WrestlingHeads dot com. All the reviews on the days are up there from our buddy Chris, a.k.a. ROH Code, put some hard work into there. Um, you, you got you. This is something that, you know, it's not something you can skip over. You have to go back and watch some of the days of this tournament. It'll just also, blow your mind. Speaking of Chris, you might want to also check his Noah review um, from uh, the show that they just had, too. So, so if you like Noah, if you like Japan wrestling, period, you know, Chris is the guy to talk to. Like, Chris watches everything. And I mean everything. He watches everything. He's he's probably got it got it on tape or whatever. He's got it. <laughs> he's got, like, the yeah. fucking box where he gets all the Japanese wrestling uh, matches. So, now that's a fucking wrestling head. Yeah. Shout out to Chris if, if he's listening. Um. But on a whole other note, um, we actually talked about Del Rio the other day, about him uh, yeah. joining uh, AAA. Um, now it's yeah. talks. Remember we mentioned about Rey Mysterio, so it's really looking like Rey Mysterio might be going there as soon as he 
kind of gets out of his contract with the WWE. But WWE signed them though. That's that's one thing I, I don't I think. think yeah. I don't think his contract is like. If his contract was big, don't you think they would be using him? I mean, it doesn't seem like WWE will like want to keep him until they bring in Kalisto in the main roster. You know, I mean, even, I mean to, to be honest with you, they're not even using Rey Mysterio now. So I know because he's he's hurt. To be honest with you, I'm gonna tell you who's who's their uh, Spanish uh, wrestlers right now, and um, they're not they're, these guys are not even Mexican, and it's uh, Ole. Come on. Hey, everybody thinks they're Mexican, so that's who, that's who it is right now, dude. They're on TV more than Sin Cara. Fuck Sin Cara. Fuck the face or card. Or Hoodie Coat. Fuck Hoodie Coat. He's above. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. um, but anyways, let's, let's see what happens with Ray. I mean, if Ray... To be honest with you, if he does go to Triple A, uh, I don't want to see him wrestle because those guys from Triple A, they, they could go. And with Rey Mysterio, the way he's been wrestling in WWE as of late, I, I just have I no interest in him. I think he could teach those guys something. If, he could teach AAA them. Really... I mean, yeah, Triple A. I mean, they can do like, um, they can fly around and shit. Rey Mysterio could barely fly now today. So, I mean, he's like a door that's flying shit, you know? I mean, Ray does what he does. He does his little, you know... I, I'm telling best. you, it's a lot different. It's different. It's you know how different. Ray like, does his Ray little um, slide, slide, slide um, his little belly slide and shit? And when you're, like, land outside the ring? But, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? AAA, you, you got guys doing fucking her Karanas and doing crazy shit like that. I'm telling you, it's it's it's, it's, it's a different de- demand here. It's different. I mean, Ray Mysterio from the 90s can probably do it. I, Definitely understand what you're saying, but I mean, they need some veterans in that locker, probably. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, he could probably teach these guys a little thing or two. But I just don't. I, for some reason, I just don't want to see him in, in the ring and, and whatever his new AAA thing they're doing in the LRA network. And and I I just like to see maybe making appearances. So like what Hulk Hogan's doing in WWE. That, that's what I, I would like to see from Rey Mysterio. He's a he's a legend in Mexico, and 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 just show him some class here, you know. I think Ray's ring is, ring time is done to me. I mean, I've been following the guy for so long. I just think he's just it's time for him to hang it up. I think we I think we said that before, but it doesn't look like he's gonna do anything. All right, but um, as for Del Rio, um, he could do whatever he could want to do. Um, I'm. Sub- I'm glad he's not gonna do nothing stupid like going back to his old uh, gimmick, uh, Dos Caras Junior, because that's what he was before he got signed. As, before he got signed with the WWE, so they're actually bringing him as Del Rio. So see what happens. Um, and when when it comes out, I hope maybe you, you want to check it out and see what, what you think of Triple uh, A wrestling, you know. And, and they're gonna have it in English, so and maybe we could review it in the future wrestling head episode. Yeah, man, definitely. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, the WWE just had a 40, uh, around 40 wrestlers just received a tryout um, on, on August 6th and 7th. Um, and it was ran by NFC head trainer Bill DeMott, of course. Uh, wonder what wrestlers were in that tryout. Was it just only on Australia? I'm not sure, but it, you know it I could think be. I it was some just only in Australia. I don't think it was like they, they had they brought people like say Biff Busick or anything like that. No, I think it's just. I know they have another one. They have another one coming in September, and that one's going to be in Orlando. Okay, maybe you see that could bring in uh, possibly anybody. You never know. I, they had like remember when they had all those trials that when they brought in Kevin Steen. Um, Roderick Strong, I think David ACH. Starr was even part of it. ACH, yeah. Well, pretty much Willie Mack was part of it, too. So, um, if they're going to have another one like that, let's see what happens. Let's see any interesting names that's going to happen. You know? Fuck it, bring the Young Bucks. They always, they always been teasing it for fucking Do the Young Bucks even need a tryout? Yeah, everybody if, needs a tryout. You know, I'm just joking, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a tryout. 
I, I got to get some breaking news. Um, according to these, um, to the, uh, you know, dirt sheets, possibly Seth Rollins, um, I guess he had this interview, and it's a possibility that... Um, oh, I know where he's going. I know where he's going. Might, possibility that he might be cashing in at SummerSlam, where everybody cashes in. Everybody catches in at fucking SummerSlam. All right. All right. I got to say something here. All right. If Seth Rollins cash in at SummerSlam, win the title or not, I'm going to be fucking pissed off. Why? And this is why. This is why. Why SummerSlam? Three out of SummerSlam is where it happens. But you're making it so predictable. So next year's win- main bank winner, whoever it is, I mean, look, Cesaro last or year, Sammy look, Sammy look, this out, though. Last year we had two briefcases. Now we have one. The okay, raw yeah, briefcase always. It doesn't matter. We can have three or five of them. SummerSlam, ha- why has to be SummerSlam? You're making it too predictable, you know? I mean... It's getting kind of ridiculous. It's going to be three in the last four years. Somebody cash in, either win it or don't win it. You saw, like, Del Rio cash in against Punk. Then we saw last year with Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan. So if Seth does that, win the title or not, I, I don't know. It's going to be like, what the fuck? You know? Yeah, I... I I'm, with, I'm with you there. I think they, they need to hold off on cashing in the money in the bank. You know, one of the things that made it so good is the suspension that he could do it at any time. And when you do it within the first couple months, it's just like, oh, man, like, come on. And especially for a guy like Seth Rollins, he needs to hold that briefcase for a while. And he just needs to start winning feuds and he needs to start building himself up, you know? You know what? I I honestly would. I would be upset too if he if he cashes in at SummerSlam. Honestly, I'd be upset. I get where you're coming yeah. from, guys. It's just that you know I'm a big Seth Rollins fan. And it, it, I know. Oh yeah, well, yeah. I'm a huge I'm a huge Seth Rollins fan too. But I think that I think that's going to kill him more than it's going to help him. I think yeah. if they if they wait for him to do it in the long run, it's going to help him a lot more, and it's going to make him seem a lot more relevant. Yeah, yeah. Look, Skid, look, I know you like Seth Rollins, but think about Jack Swagger first. Think about Jack Swagger when he cashed in the money in the bank. What is he doing now? He's doing the We the People thing, but after he lost the title, what have he done since? You know what I'm saying? Do you want Seth Rollins to go that way, go in that direction? You don't want that. Del Rio, well, look at him now. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Just... Uh, they should just, they got to kick back with that. I mean, especially doing a summer slam, it's like so predictable. So it's like going to say next year, Cesaro wins it. Okay, book it. Cesaro is going to cash it in at, at summer slam 2015. Just, just book it. Might as well do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's um, skinny. It's kind of ridiculous. I know we mentioned Willie Mack the other day. So, yep. um, we're, well, there's, Willie Mack is, he's basically finishing up, uh, according to PW Insider, he's, uh, finishing up a couple more matches, and then, uh, he should be heading to development, um, in a few, uh, months, so, um, he basically has yeah. the same, he, he basically has the same development deal, uh, as Kevin Steen. Uh, so, but um, I, I know um, Willie Mack has a couple uh, pretty good matches coming up that I just saw. Uh, he has one coming up with uh, with uh, Mr. Joey Ryan, and uh, that is uh, actually going to be at a promotion by the name of All Pro Wrestling. So All okay, Pro Wrestling Bay Area. All yeah, All, all, all Pro Wrestling is definitely gonna. Um, do that match, and those guys are like good friends. And plus, you know, I I believe um, Joey Ryan kind of helped Willie Mack, you know, when uh, he was first coming up. Yeah, and 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 and, oh, and championship wrestling from Hollywood. There's a storyline. He's supposed to get a title shot. So 
I don't know when that's going. You know, it's funny if Willie's not even announcing it. It's like, y'all have to wait. Y'all have to wait. So, you have to wait for whatever that announcement is. So, it hopefully, I don't know. It's just going to be weird because, you know, it's funny that when um, say Slate Randall, a.k.a. Sean Ricker, just got released from the WWE, it's, it's, I just got that weird feeling that, okay, if Willie Mack does win the title, Sean Ricker comes back and he beats Willie Mack for that title. You know, I, I got a feeling something something like that's going to happen. And so, um, I don't know, but as for Willie Mack in the WWE, um, I, I'm happy that he's going to be there. You know, he, he, he's a pretty cool dude. He, he deserves where he's going to be. And um, I have a question for both of you. What do you guys want to see from Willie Mack in the WWE? I want to, first I'm going to pass, I want to get to answer first because about a, almost a year ago at this time he called in the show and wished you a happy birthday so I want first to your thoughts <laughs> first of all I'm kind of upset that the WWE fucked up uh, the new nation Willie Mack could have walked in as a new member that would have been sweet oh god <laughs> okay but w- what you want to see is Willie Mack in the WWE I just want to see what Will he put on fucking good matches and succeed? I mean, NXT is where, is, is, is where it's going to be at. So NXT, like, those guys are going to start off at NXT. So don't be surprised to see a Willie Mac kevin Steen match, you know, in the um, NXT ring. Maybe they'll, you know, yeah. mix up Willie Mac with Sami Zayn. Maybe they'll, you know, mix up Willie Mac with uh, Adrian Neville. You know, maybe Tyler Breeze, you know. So it, it, it's going to be good because... I can see him as a big baby face uh, in um, in uh, NXT, and then you know. When oh you man! Just just huh? imagine he just imagine he gets pops like like example PWG. He was on fire at one point, then they fucked it up for him. Just imagine WWE. He does something has that same um, situation in in the NXT and the. WWE gets it right. I mean, that's going to be like kind of saying, what the fuck? WWE got it right, but not PWG. You know, I, I remember Tom was mentioning about uh, uh, like a month ago or two about how Willie Mack was on fire. I mean, if he gets that fire back going in, in the NXT and WWE gets it right, I'll be like, holy shit. That's going to be some crazy ass shit. And I don't know what happened, but I don't know if Willie Mack pissed somebody off in PWG, but. Hey, it just shows this guy could do this guy could do anything. Yeah. Definitely looking forward to yeah. what Willie's got in WWE. Yeah, I, I think I think Willie Max can do a whole bunch of things. You know, whether they put him in a, a serious role, I think he'll do good. You know, even if they give him like a comedy gimmick, I think he'll still do good with that. You know, I don't think he'll be, you know, as bad as like a Santino comedy wise, but if they gave him like some sort of comedy. I, I think he'd do good with it. The funny part is he's actually really funny, so you know. Yeah, that's the, the thing. Is, you know? I, the WWE is going to give him a fucking script, so that's what's really going to probably fuck. I, I hope it don't fuck nothing up. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You know, so, some guys aren't. You know, we we don't know how you know great Willie Mac would be with you know WWE promos because you could be good doing promos for independence, but once, you know, you had millions of people watching you, you could be like, oh, shit, uh, what do I say again? It's funny that you has mentioned, you know, the whole promo situation. I'm wondering how Kevin Steen's promos are going to be in the WWE. <laughs> I think they're going to be the same, but with uh, with a lot less F-words. And yeah, do, same thing. So same, basically same thing what you're saying is that you see Kevin Steen going as a... As a um, a heel? No, he could go as a heel or face. I think. I'm thinking uh, I think. I think. Heel. Like I said, Kevin, Kevin seems so versatile. He could just. He could do both with ease. He could do both with like no problem. If if they told him to be a heel, he could be the baddest heel of them all. If they told him to be a face, he could be you know kissing babies but still kicking ass and you know I, I like I said I think he'll he could do good in both roles. So, yeah, you know, and it's, and it's funny. It's funny. I, I just read something from um, WrestlingObserver.com that there's reports that uh, the WWE 
uh, has big plans for Kevin Steen, you know, because they announced his signing and with WWE Network in Canada. And there's reports saying that uh, WWE has told Dean Ambrose to stop doing the cannonball in the corner because apparently they want it to kind of settle down for a while and then they're going to apparently give it to Kevin Steen. Yeah, because he for mm-hmm. sure was doing the cannonball. Like, I love Dean Ambrose, but he's doing a couple guys' moves. That's 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 uh, in the indies right now. Um, I'm yeah. Really everybody, the takes, everybody takes each other's moves. Come on. True. True. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody this day and age comes up with their own moves. You know, the days of people making up their own moves that was like Japanese wrestling in the eighties and nineties. You know. Yeah, and another thing I just want to say about Kevin Steen, like in his. Mike work. I think he'll be okay. I mean, he ain't gonna be cursing. He ain't gonna say um, anything about like, oh, I, I, I can't wait to do. the next time. I'm gonna have a number tattooed on, on my body. It's gonna be the day you die. That ain't gonna happen. But as a face, though, I, I could see him doing saying some funny ass shit. Like, say example, he's gonna feud against Tyler Breeze. He might say something like, hey, nice pink and purple tights or something like that. You know, I can actually see him say some crazy like that. Um, but then, uh, and then, or I can say, or example, when, say he ends up feeding with the intention and he asks Sammy Zane for help, like, hey, I'm getting freaking tired of getting my butt kicked by freaking these two, I don't know, he, he can say something funny about the intention, you know, <laughs> and asking for Sammy Zane for help. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting what he's going to do, I, I, but like I said, Tom, you, you're gonna disagree. You're always gonna disagree with me, but the freaking um, package pause ain't gonna happen. But I man, don't think on. so. I there. I still, you know, I still have this belief that Kevin Steen's gonna prove that it's much safer than a normal pile driver. That he knows. I mean, he gave Maria, Candice LeRae both package pile drivers. He is given. No one's ever gotten injured from a package. He's even pile given a Silesia one. Yeah. yeah. He is. Nobody is. People have gotten injured from regular pile drivers. You know, Stone Cold. Even though that wasn't a regular one, that was a uh, like a reverse jumping pile driver that okay. Almost gave like him. a tombstone, but you land on your ass instead of your knees. Yeah. But a package pile driver is much safer, and you know what? I can see it. I can see it not being used at first. But then I could see it, like, him using it all of a sudden and then, like, turning it into, like, a storyline. Like, WWE, like, officials and, like, Triple H is freaking out, telling Kevin Steen he he can't do it. And then he does it some more. And, you know, and he's kind of, like, being, you know, the anti-authority and he's going against, you know, what they're saying from him. Like, I think I think it could work. Um, and, you know, what? Like, even if it doesn't work... He's still got plenty of other moves. Yeah, I mean, I, and plus, I totally I mean, they, they mentioned, they mentioned, they, mentioned they mentioned him as the package pile driving Corbettian. Would they mention the package pile driver on WWE. dot com if he if there wasn't a hint that he wasn't going to use it? Man, that don't mean nothing. It doesn't mean the thing is we got to sit down and wait. And watch, you know. So we can't see. I mean, that's 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 like the biggest thing. Like we have to wait and see what's going to happen. Because anything is possible. Um, now a day with the WWE, I might get a job tomorrow, and you know, put WH on the map over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that can probably happen. You never know. Or Triple H's pedigree, my ass. Whatever. <laughs> But um, anyways, um, uh, hold on. For a second before we move on, let's go back to Willie Mack for a sec. His promo skills, I mean, his, his promo thing has got to. It's gonna be. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see because when I when I see him either at PWG, AWS, it, it's it's like a little comedic in the way, but it's like saying, okay, I'm black and I'm in a comedic way. You know, the, the N word is not gonna be used anymore. The F word is not gonna be used anymore. More so. It's interesting First, what he's going to do in I, the WWE. I've never really heard him, you know, cuss like that in promos, Willie. But I, I saw him in AWS a couple of times. It's like, I'm I'm, I'm black joke, you know? It's like, he always does that thing, you know? And, um, 
and I think even the Santinos. But at the same time, he makes it up because you know because he's black, and when you says the words in Spanish, it's funny because you don't hear that comment from a, a black person saying, "Oh, I like to eat a." Uh, John Parado and all that stuff. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, what? That, that kind of trips you out. And um, and I heard it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, he said some crazy shit like that. So it's going to be crazy. Um, it's going to be interesting what he's going to say in the WWE, how his mic skills going to be. So it's going to be a little different. But to me, being around Willie so many times, he's a very smart guy. You know, you got to really think about it. He's a very smart guy. So he could probably work something out. Definitely. Um, real quick, gentlemen, take one more break, and uh, we'll come back and uh, talk some more wrestling. This is Kyle O'Reilly, and you are listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. Yo, welcome to WH Radio. Today's show is brought to you by the good people down at WrestlingRambles.com. For the latest in wrestling news, in-depth blog, and hot-topic discussion, Hit up WrestlingRambles.com. Remember, it's not just any ramble, but a Wrestling Rambles. WrestlingRambles.com. And also special thanks to Ring Rust Radio and FLTDWrestling.com. Thank Since January of 2013, the Indie Power Rankings have been ranking the very best independent wrestlers on a weekly basis with voters all across the U.S. and Canada. They do the part to support indie wrestling. Give them a follow at Indie Ranking as they release the new Indie Power Rankings every Tuesday. Wrestling Heads Radio, we are back. Hashtag WH Radio, hashtag I am skits. But, um, and that is Oscar, and that is Tom. Um, yeah, and, uh, this is just before I just want to say, you guys got to check out Saturday. Um, we're going to have a special show at the Wrestling Guy store with, um, hopefully, well, we can say we're doing a show during the Lita signing, so hopefully you can get her on. So, guys, you gotta check that out on Saturday, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3, 3 p.m. Pacific. You don't want to miss that out. And uh, not only that, if you're going to attend to the signing, you, you guys could come earlier around 11 a.m. Because Drew McIntyre, a.k.a. Drew Galloway, the Evolved Champion, will be ha- having his own signing as well from 11 to 1. Then, and uh, you guys could check you, could, you know, you can get a signing from Drew McIntyre, take a pitch with him. So get, get up to the wrestling guy store Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. I, it's, plus, it's cheaper than going to that WWE panel, you know. You know so. It's funny that you mention it. we got to get the wrestling guy to call up before the end of the show so he can promote the show. Uh, I mean, text him. I mean, text him. I'll oh, definitely I'll do that. Him. Yeah, you gotta get that. the wrestling guy himself to promote the store. He can give out the address and everything. So. Yeah, yeah. Text and say, hey, call in. Um, but like I said, it, this is going to be a fun event. And to me, I mean, the WWE panel they're having is like, if you're going to sit in the balcony, it's fifty bucks. If you're going to sit down, it's like a hundred or something bucks. I don't know if that's even worth it. And just to watch a, um, a review of the next WWE or the review roster of the WWE video game, and um, I don't know. That's to me is like ridiculous price. I don't know about you, Tom, but if you were, there was a panel like that in New York and there's a freaking, they can announce the WWE roster and it's 50 bucks to sit in, like, in the balcony and 100 some bucks just to sit nearby them. I don't know, will you pay that to see Sting, Hogan, John Cena, Austin, all in one panel? Um... Maybe just for the fact that you know there's a you know there's a chance that you know you get to ask them a question you know yeah and they're they're answering it right in front of your face and you know that's something that you know you can't really you know put a price on but honestly maybe not really yeah you know? because it seems like the the ones that paid a hundred bucks or whatever this hundred or maybe a little bit more. They had the best chance to ask the question. The the ones that, that paid fifty bucks pretty much sitting up up, up on the balcony. I don't know if they're gonna ask it they're gonna let people ask questions. The ones that paid fifty bucks. So um No, it's not I, bad at the um at the um Nokia Club. I've been there. It's really not that bad. The balcony's not that bad. I know bad. I've been there too. 
not really, but I don't know. Would, would they let a guy in a microphone hang out in the balcony and let him ask King or Hogan a question like from up there? I don't know about that. I think it's a, it's a waste of money, to be honest. I mean, I don't even yeah, know. There's some people that are, that are really stupid, and they're going to pay that money just because Hulk Hogan's going to be there. And hey, Sting, Sting is there. But imagine you get to ask Sting or Austin or any of those guys any question that you've ever wanted to know personally, and they answer you. They're not answering anybody else at that time. They're answering right to your face. You make yeah, a point, but I'm not, time, look, you, you get to pay all that money. That's the thing. Like, I can catch them on well, the street. Some, some people have that money, and then, you know, to them, you know, a hundred bucks, you know, is worth it. It's worth seeing, you know, seeing those guys so close up and, you know, well, hearing their answers so close up. So, okay, I don't know. I don't think you, some people to waste okay. the money. What, what, what will you ask Austin or Sting? Like, who are you to ask a question to one of those guys? What, what will you ask them? I don't think I wouldn't know. I would just be like... You see? That's uh, the thing. I, I wouldn't know either because what the hell am I asking? Like, are, are you going to sign with the WWE or are you actually in the WWE? Like, what the fuck? Are you going to wrestle at WrestleMania? Yeah, of course, Sting's going to say, I, I would love to or whatever. I would love to wrestle The Undertaker. He's going to come out with that bullshit answer. So, it's not like... like uh, I mean, you guys are cool. to ask these guys. I, I would start... I mean, I think we'd all be nervous. I would just be like, uh, yeah, I like you guys. You guys are cool. All right, bye. <laughs> yeah, you see what I'm saying? It's going to be kind of tough to ask any of these guys a question. To me, if I ever ask, if I get the chance to ask Austin a question, I'll probably will say, like, if Owen Hart never dropped you in your head, do you think you'd have been still um, wrestling today or – Matches like saying you might you want to have a match against Austin or CM Punk already. You know? I'll probably would ask something like that. He'll say some crazy huh? shit to you. He'll he'll be in character. He'll say, "What'd you say, son?" What? He'll be like, "What'd you say, son?" <laughs> yeah, and, and let's see if he stunners my ass, which was I doubt it. But that's the only thing I probably would ask Austin is, "What would you think would happen if Austin Owen Hart would never drop you in his head?" You know? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Real quick, shout out to Drew Gulak for following us. Shout out to Drew Gulak. Um, shout out to Drew Gulak. You know what? People are actually using his name. They're actually calling him. This is now his new name is Drew Gulak. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know why people are calling him that way, but, but <laughs> I, I still like Gulak. Um, I have some news on SummerSlam actually. Um, there hasn't been nothing announced yet, but there's still there's talk about um. Uh, a post show uh, and a pre show. So, um, but of course they'll have Alex Riley and Booker T and Renee Young and probably some wrestler, some other wrestler yeah. probably that pre show and the post show. Um, who knows? Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. Watch that pre show. You never know. They probably saw me on camera entering the building. So but they might. They they, they might just show me working in the background. Yeah, just just look for the guys wearing a purple shirt. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, trying Handsome to find a guy, guy in a purple shirt out of 18,000 people Handsome isn't going to be a guy challenge. Guy. Handsome black guy. <laughs> okay, I'll be wearing a Brock Lesnar <laughs> shirt, so you can find me there. I'm wearing nah, a Brock you need to, like, hold up. you need to hold up a sign that says, hey, it's me, Oscar. Hey, you know what, Oscar, you actually do have good seats to fucking take a sign. Damn, I gotta find a fucking cardboard or something, and I never made a sign before, but uh, I'll see what I can Put, do. Do a hashtag WH Radio or Hi Tom. Oh, that'd be nice. Hashtag or do WH. A, oh, hi Tom. Oh, oh man. On one side, hi, Tom. on one side, Hi Tom, and on the other one, hashtag WH Radio. Or you can do one. I'll, I'll probably we'll put a hashtag WH Radio. I'd probably do something like that. I, you know, remember uh, skits that we were at Bound for Glory and we were chasing AJ just to see get the you know get on camera because we're wrestling we're wearing our wrestling head shirts and I was like fucking the cool there and AJ was funny wrestling head shirts. AJ Styles was supposed to be on our side after he won the title at Bound for Glory. I know uh, they're yeah. actually getting ready for him and everything and he ended up going the other side. I was like, what the fuck? He he botched. You can say that he botched. 
Because he was supposed to go on our, on our side, but fuck. And imagine he went to our side, our fucking wrestling head shirts would have been on TNA programming. Well, they were our Ring of Honor, thanks to Chris. Yeah, thanks to Chris, yeah. And uh, Tom needs to get a shirt, and I don't know, yeah. go to Beyond Wrestling or something. Hold on, guys. Okay. Yeah. And then once, once I know I'm going to be going to a show, I'll get a wrestling head shirt, wear it, either that or I'll paint, I'll paint my face, hashtag WH Radio. I like that. <laughs> we actually have a caller, 269. Who is this? 269, you are on WH Radio. Who's talking? Oh, well, you already know who this is. How's it going, fellas? Oh, wow. Oh, Nick. How's it Nick, going? I got... Nick, I got a question to ask you, Nick. Sure, shoot. All right, I'm going to shoot it right now. What do you think the death of the new nation of the domination? Oh, my God. You know what? I'm I'm so... You know what? I am disappointed, but it's not a surprise at the same time. Well, Nick, don't worry. Yeah, I'm... Nick, don't worry. You got a savior, and his name is Willie Mac. He's coming. <laughs> has he has he been signed to the WWE? Well, he's gonna do something. He's gonna, I don't know. He's gonna. He won't let. I you mean, <laughs> he's gonna be signed to WWE. Um, if you go back and listen to our show with B Boy, B Boy already basically <laughs> said it. he's going. So. Yeah. All right. You know what? If he comes, he could be my savior. I will welcome him with open arms. You know, we we need a re- we we need a real black person in the WWE. So Willie Mack will foot the bill. A real black person? So you saying that uh, Biggie Lynx is not a real black person, and you said that Kofi Kingston is not a real black person, and Xavier no, Rhodes? No, 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 they all lost the music. They all lost their Negro cards a long time ago. <laughs> Fucking crazy. I mean, I don't know. The WWE, they could have had something with that. I mean, if I was uh, creative, I would have had that going on. And if you want to debut Willie Mack, he could have been a new member. Yeah, yeah and, surprisingly, and surprisingly, you know, they were giving praise to um, Xavier Woods on, on, on his commentary in that one SmackDown episode. So... They were like saying, "Oh, this guy could be a really good heel," and they they, they loved it. And all of a sudden, you, next day, the freaking new nation has just broken up for no goddamn reason. So you know, what? it really I, wasn't I, a I breakup. Really... It was like, um, "Oh, let's just kill it while well, nobody's uh, paying attention." Basically, it really wasn't you know like. What? A... I, really, what? I really feel bad for Xavier Woods because he he was really dedicated to his new role. He been practicing and everything, and everybody been impressed with him backstage. I don't know why they just killed it all of a sudden. They I'm might have something special for him. They might have like a subtle thing. For him. Let's just I mean wait and see what happens because we haven't seen him on I TV think... lately. Yeah, he's been in the dark this. match and he's still losing. I mean nobody watches dark matches, but the people that are there. Oh, that's true, yeah. but still. I mean, it doesn't count. Dark matches, you can't count a dark match from a match that everybody watching on TV. You know what I mean? Yeah. I count dark matches. I count dark matches. I guess. <laughs> I think you're the only person yeah. that counts dark matches, bro. I, I do, remember bro, I thought... you... I do, I because once, I thought... you get prom- once you get the promoted to the dark matches, that's it. That's it. You're done. Oh. You gotta come but, up somewhere. Well, Xavier Woods. Well, I, I wish him luck, but I just I just don't want to see no. Um, what's that guy's name? Um, what's the guy that got released because he mentioned Kobe Bryant? Um, Washington. What's his name? Yeah, him. Like he, he tried to start something, and then all of a sudden he, he squashed it, and he became the manager of the primetime players. You know, I just don't want to that's see that true. kind of role from him. I, that's why I don't want to see yeah. that kind of role from David Woods. I don't want to see no 2.0 that one day. So, I mean, let's see what happens. And I, I, I'm sure it's David Woods, he's really a smart guy. He ain't going to mention no Kobe Bryant or no freaking, um, I don't know what's going on right now, um, Delonte West thing. I don't want to, he ain't going to mention all that stuff. So, uh, I'm sure he's. That's smart. So, yeah, yeah. you know what's up. I'll say Wes. 
a Paul George or or in um, Roy Hibbert, whatever, whatever rumors you heard about the NBA. So, um, tomorrow, NXT, finally, we get to see Tyler Breeze go against Adrian Neville for the NXT title. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck left, because Tyler Breeze is that dude, and Adrian Neville is that dude. Okay, uh, that was Nick that was know, laughing. That, that was me that was laughing. I mean, it could be a great match, but I don't know. Maybe because I read the spoilers already. It doesn't mean nothing to me now. Because yeah, it, because because technically they should have this match on the NFT Takeover coming up in September. This should have been the main event, and they wasted it on some random TV taping. I'm very disappointed. It, yeah, it, it is a little disappointing, but at the same time, when he won that match at, against Sami Zayn, do do you guys actually believe that? that Tyler Breeze could be NXT champion? Because I, I, yeah. I, I didn't even think I, he would. I think it would be a great heel yeah. champion. Yeah, he, he's, the top, he's the top heel in NFT, arguably, right now. I mean, he would make a good uh, NFT heel champion. He really would. Yeah. Not, you know, every, not to mention, his in-ring skills have improved greatly since he debuted in NXT as Tyler Breeze. You know, he's done some stuff when he was in uh, FCW, but since his Tyler Breeze character came on NXT, his in-ring ability has also just went up. So I oh, think Tyler Breeze agree. could make a credible champion. I remember when I first seen Breeze uh, last year at the, um, the WWE um, SummerSlam um, Access, and, you know, he had a match with uh, C.J. Parker. I was like, I, I was like, this guy right here, like, for some reason, at that moment, because Fandango, you know, he was hot at the time. I was like, those guys, if they wrestled each other or were a tag team, it would be great. But now, you know, we already know where Fandango's at. So, but I could see this guy doing big, big fucking things on the main roster too. Yeah, but you know what scares me about NXT, which. It was very rare that I had to say something against say something against NXT, but I'm actually worried that they want to push that Bill the Bull Dumpsy guy, and they want to have a world title run, like right there, an NXT title run, yeah. just like that. Yeah, I, I, I'm really actually worried that's going to happen. If they put the title on Bull Dumpsy, then I'm going to go down to Orlando myself to the Performance Center and say, "Well, you know what? Since he's world champion, make me world champion next." <laughs> Yeah, because look, that so-called tag team with Mojo O'Reilly, he's going to freaking backstab him, and then he's going to have a little feud yeah. going on, and after and he's going to kick the shit out of um, Mojo O'Reilly, then he's going to go after the damn title. I could see that happening already. Bum. Mojo O'Reilly's a fucking bum. I'm sorry. He got destroyed by Roos of last year at TakeOver, or early this year at TakeOver. Yeah. <laughs> you guys remember that? He's... Yeah, and he's been a bum before that. I mean, when I first saw him, I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Big ass dude thing? What is he, the ultimate warrior or something? The fuck is this shit? And he is <laughs> tight. That's all he is. I don't know why did you sign him. Maybe because a former football player? I don't know fucking know. Oh, was he? But I he, didn't know. Yeah, he used to play for the Cardinals. But, um,. I don't know. It's just he was like probably the, the last tier of guys that I don't know where they just signed guys who like ex football players or MMA guys or something like that or signing. He'll be released. So he was the last well, tier he, of that. He was part of that program that the WWE had with NFL Network on WWE signing ex players who couldn't make yeah. it in the NFL. Yeah. He yeah. Was part of that program. Yeah, they had that dumb program. It's like, okay, does he does he even watch um, the WWE in his career? He just said he just probably thought this was gonna be money opportunity, but fuck okay. it. Um, I don't know, but we'll see what happens. But I like their future. You got Kevin Steen, Billy Mack is coming. You Kenta. got Kenta, Fergal, David, Fergal, David. I'm still gonna call him Prince David. It's Fergal Devitt now. How, 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 about we just, how about we just call him Devitt? Devitt, fuck it. it we're not calling Sami Zayn El Generico no more. 
Oh, there they're, you go. Like I said, they're, they're probably going to call uh, Prince Devitt either Fergal Devitt or just Devitt. It's going to be one of those. We'll call him Devitt. Well, but you know Renee Young, the, uh, she uh, announced him as Fergal Devitt, so I'm waiting for the Kevin well, Singer interview. Yeah. I don't know. Well, well whatever, yeah. even if it's Fergal Devitt, you know, I'll take that. It's his name. It's his real name, so. Yeah, definitely is. So You know yeah. what? My only, fear, I, my only fear of everybody who uses this name, my biggest concern is Kenta. He's my biggest concern. I don't know why. But I think he's gonna have a problem connecting down there. I really do. Speaking of the <laughs> you know um, speaking of the uh, of the new generation, did you guys see Zane's um tweet? He's just talking about my My uh, generation. Yeah. <laughs> he says Kevin Steen, Adrian Neville, Fergal Devitt, Kenta, Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, and Rollins. Because all those guys came up together and it it's gonna be beautiful, you know, with all those guys. One fucking roster. Tell me, you guys, it's going to be some fucking change. Like, the change is coming. I don't know when. Just like I said yesterday, the change is yeah. coming. I don't know when, but it's coming. Just wait. Probably when Vince w- McMahon dies. Yeah. Don't <laughs> you know why? I heard you put the words right on my mouth. When the Vince McMahon steps down and Triple H takes over, that's when you'll see the change. Yeah. Yeah, we've been talking about that the last uh, last couple of days. Um, about how Vince McMahon just needs to step away because I can I can really sense that Triple H just wants to take this on full force. He wants to do it with Steph, um, and they just want to you know change, they want to bring in a new era in this business. You know, with the WWE Network in, I'm sure they probably realize you know what. We need to start a new, you know, a new product here, and we need to start bringing, you know, a new different kind of taste and flavor to the WWE. And in order for that to happen, Vince, you know, Vince McMahon and some of the other higher ups need to uh, need to get going, hit the high road. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And with Triple H, I I don't want to say he's going to be the savior of everything, but. It's going to be hard to say that this Triple H knows what he's doing. The only way we can find out is the, the time it's ha- when, it, when it happens. So I, I think he knows what he's doing. If he's doing such a good job over there in, in um in, uh the development, you know, I'm pretty sure he can do a good job, you know, on the main roster. And the guy's he's well respected already. So all right, but uh, I want to go back to Nick real fast. Nick, you, you said that Kenta. My struggle um, in connection in, down there. Why will you say that? I believe it's really because the style that he used over there in uh, in Noah over in Japan is very different from WWE. He will have to really water down <clears throat> his style, and plus the language barrier is going to be something that he has to overcome as well. I mean, the America, your typical. WWE audience won't have a freaking clue who he is. So this will be totally up to WWE to really promote and introduce him to the fan base, introduce him to that new raw audience, to be like, hey, this is Kansas, this is where he's from, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't know, Nick. similar to what they did with Daniel Brown. I don't know, Nick. I disagree. I think Kansas going to do well. He's one of the best wrestlers in the world. He'll fucking hold his own. I, I'm, I'm telling you, man. I <laughs> just just be skeptical a little bit. I'm not saying it's going to be a complete fail, but you have to be skeptical a little bit. And also another thing I want to throw out there as well: we talk about Triple H and how he could potentially do better on the main roster. I think one of the obstacles that Triple H needs to worry about is the executive producer Kevin Dunn. Kevin Dunn is very anti foreign wrestler. You probably Kevin get rid of him. Very anti foreign wrestler. If, we we mentioned we mentioned that earlier. Actually, I brought it up. I said once. I said once Vince McMahon leaves, I said Kevin Dutton's job is in jeopardy because you know Vince McMahon Senior told his son, you know Vince McMahon Junior, that uh, Kevin Dunn has a job for life. Well, once Vince McMahon's out, Triple H is probably going to look at Kevin Dunn and say, "All right, well, uh, you're out of here. I don't care. Here, you're gone. Please get out." 
because I'm I'm sure Triple H doesn't like him. You know, I don't think I don't think Triple H likes him. I think Kevin Dunn is just Vince McMahon's, you know, little uh, little hand me down. I guess you could say. Well, I'll tell you what, Kevin Dunn is is very has very good influence over Vince McMahon. Kevin Dunn is the reason why. You don't see Adam Rose on TV. He's the reason why Cesaro's not getting a push. He's the reason yeah. why they stumble coming out of the block. Yeah. And I think and he's, he's, good he's right done now. this. He's done this for years now. He's done this for yeah. years, and then you know it's only within the last couple of years that uh, that people have started to come out and say, you know, just what a piece of shit this guy is. Um. You know, Jim Cornette, obviously, is one of the most notable people. But even, I, I mentioned this, I forget when, it was a little while back when we were talking about Kevin Dunn at one point. You know, Paul Bear, one of the most nicest guys in, like, wrestling history. Everybody who's ever met him has nothing bad to say about him. He was just a class act in the business. He hated Kevin Dunn with all his life. Like, he, like, legitimately hated, not just liked him, he hated him and wished nothing but bad things on him. And when Paul Bear hates you, there's something wrong with you. Right. Yeah. Um, gentlemen, we're actually uh, running out of time. Uh, Nick, we're to let you go, bro. Um, All right, bro. Thank you for calling in. We had a good chop, chop it up here. Um, and uh, I guess we'll talk to you um, next week sometime. All right. All right, fellas. Stay safe, all right? All right. All right. Take care, man. Shout out to Nick there. Um, We're actually running out of time here, guys. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to go back and listen to this interview we had here with Biff Busick. If you just tuned in, that's a long ago. We had Biff Busick on earlier on today. We want to thank Biff Busick once again for being on the show. Shout out to him. We'll see him at PWG Bola. Uh, definitely enjoyed the interview. I'm pretty sure the boys here uh, can uh, agree with me on that one. Of course. That was great. Yeah, we we got to bring him back in the future. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, but uh, in the meanwhile, what you guys should do is go ahead and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling Heads if you're not. Uh, we're also on YouTube. Subscribe us on there at youtube.com backslash wrestling heads. We are on Facebook, like us there, facebook.com backslash wrestling heads. If you want to listen to any of our shows, you can also find us on blogtalkradio.com backslash wrestling heads radio or we're on iTunes. Subscribe us in there too. So, um, yeah, like I said, um, you can also follow me myself. I'm on Twitter at WH Skits. I'm on Facebook. Just type in WH Space Skits. Um, I'm, um, make sure you follow Wrestling Heads on Instagram, too. We'll have a lot of pictures up coming this weekend. So make sure you follow us on that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it up to the rest of the guys. And uh, Yeah. All right. Um, you can follow me at Sinister632 um, at Twitter, Instagram, or Vine. Um, check out wrestlingheads.com. Check out my class and match of the week. Uh, like I said, the last two days I post. Uh, well, my my match of the week was triple and uh, not triple H. CM Punk versus Jeff Hardy from SummerSlam '09. Um, check that out. And not only check my stuff, I check out get this um weekly five like, if I got it right or and uh, yeah, our, the weekly five is actually coming tonight, late tonight sometime. Yeah. Yeah, and check his uh, check um, ROH's code, or well, AKA Chris. Check out his Japanese or, or international stuff, and um, and all our writers too. They always come out with some stuff too, so check that out. And um, yeah, and also uh, just to let you guys know, uh, eight, the last night episode with ACH is now on YouTube, so you guys can check it out now. So um, yeah. Uh, and tomorrow, this episode will be on tomorrow on YouTube. So check check our YouTube page, subscribe us on YouTube, and uh, you can also see past um, episodes like with us and Envy, Candice LeRae and Peter Avalon, PP Ray. Check all that stuff out. So um, and more is coming. Uh, Katarina and Drake Younger is coming. So um, subscribe us right now. And also keep on checking out Sleeves and Spark. 
And um, after we're done with the show, I'm going to go on this YouTube video about Lizzie Exposed, and she's on the bed. So I'm going to yeah, check I'm that out. Yeah, I'm going to watch that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring her back in the show <laughs> Already <laughs> And you can follow me On Twitter At to tweet me That's all you need to know For me um, Get it on Google Plus soon So once I get on Google Plus I will announce that And then Hit me up on there you know, Google Plus. I checked it out and it's it's a little confusing and I don't trust I don't trust Google with those NSA people I'm, watching. Us. I'm not a Google Plus guy myself. Us. That's that's more fucking Oscar and uh Bruce. I'm definitely not a Google Plus guy. <laughs> <laughs> but also be sure to check out WrestlingHeads.com. dot com. Check out Oscar Skits R O H code aka Chris. Check out their stuff. They're doing stuff each week. And then hopefully the only reason I haven't been doing stuff is just trying to get my tablet all synced up with everything. And once I do, and I get a get a solid keyboard for it because the keyboard that they sent me sucks. So once I get on WrestlingHeads.com, hopefully I'll be doing some blogs. I'll let you guys know what's going on with that. But check out all the other writers on WrestlingHeads.com. They're doing some uh, they're doing some great stuff on there. Check them out. Leave them some comments. Let us know how everyone's doing. And that's basically it. And a whole other note: I believe I won't see Bo Dallas this Sunday at SummerSlam. No, you you need to believe that you're going to see him on the pre-show or something. And when he comes out, I want you, I want you to smile and stick both thumbs in the air like. Okay, you how about this? Maybe I meet Bo Dallas this weekend because I might run into him. What if I meet Bo Dallas this weekend? You know what? I'll do this. If I meet him, I'm gonna take a picture. I'm gonna send it to you, and then you, that'll put a smile on your face. Yeah. But if you take a picture of him, you better be smiling. You better be sticking that thumb up. I'll take a picture with him. Know that you're bullying Cause I know he won't. You know what? You know what? Skits has a picture with him. Why, why not you send him your picture to Tom? Well, he like wasn't believing. He, right wasn't believing. he wasn't believing yet. He he was just Bo Dallas. He didn't know how to believe just yet. But now, Oscar, he knows how to believe. He knows. Okay, we'll see. Uh, if I spread it, I'll take a picture with him. You guys are fucking funny. All I know is that <laughs> I'm gonna run into um my my uh, wife Emma. Uh, and my other wife, Paige. Um, so, yeah. But I think um, we're going to go so I can watch this uh, Silesia Sparks uh, video here. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you should do it too, Tom. So, um, and, yeah, Tom. I just saw that on Ring of Honor's YouTube page. So, also, Ring of Honor, Field of Honor, this Friday, it's going to be available for video on demand probably within a couple of days. After that, so sometime early next week, steel cage match between Jay Lethal and Matt Taven for the ROH TV title, fatal four-way match for the ROH world title. Uh, looks like a great show. I wish ACA I could be there. ACA versus Cedric Alexander. Yep, bunch of great matches. Check out ROHwrestling.com. Check Our out ROH. Honor, Check out Independent Wrestling. Right like I said, I've been praising Ring of Honor lately a lot. And, yep. um, check out check out Ring of Honor. Check out all the other independent companies. You know, PWG, Beyond Wrestling, CZW, AIW, AAW, Championship AWS. Wrestling from Hollywood. Everything. Just Evolve, fucking support, Evolve, just support wrestling. You know, here. I could I I could keep going. I could keep going with Do all Japan the independent wrestling. promotions that people need to check out. Dragon Gate Japan. Just fucking support wrestling. Period. Support every other podcast too. Let's to support everybody. Yeah, big, uh, big shout out to Shining Wizards and Weekly Wrestling Podcast for sending in questions tonight. And big shout out to them. Yeah, yeah definitely shout out yeah. to them. Good dudes. Uh, shout, shout out to Force ER too, by the way. Uh, but we're running out of time. Until Saturday, me and Oscar at the Wrestling Guy Store. Hopefully, uh, Tom can join us. But uh, we're out. Peace.